morning, everybody. You can unmute yourselves. Let's all say happy 4th of July to each other. I don't know if anybody else has a flag, but morning, I morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm prepared to make that flag <laughs> on behalf of all of us. Good morning. I have no picture. I don't know why. Hmm. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Start video. <laughs> if you press at the bottom, start video. Nope. Well, we're gonna we're gonna ask everybody to um you know just shout out one happy Fourth of July to each other, and then I'll have you mute while we go through announcements and everything. So happy Fourth of July, everybody! Happy Fourth of July! Happy Fourth! Fourth! And we'll have you know a chance at the end of the session to chat again. So if you don't mind, which will mean you have to unmute yourselves later. There we go. Just because we get this uh, background sound that echoes when if we don't do that. So, all right. Well, welcome again, Jackson Community Church's Independence Day weekend celebration. I can see the flag above the Wentworth flying out through the upstairs balcony window across the street from the church. There's a teeny, teeny little flag back there. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got my other flag that I'm waving. And I'm just gonna say right now, um, I have many stoles that have been gifts. The stole is the thing that I wear here. It's my liturgical gear. This one was made by my mom as a gift for my graduation and ordination. So thanks mom, I'm wearing it. And my mom's right there and today is her birthday. So we're gonna sing her happy birthday among other things like right before prayers today. Um, we got married on her birthday just you know to make her life complex and then she got a sheet cake for her birthday from, from the ladies guild of my church back then um back to business i want to thank the people that helped make this morning possible uh billy carlton for coming again to work with the choir this morning and helping them prepare today's music for the whole choir all those gifts of wonderful voices each sung separately and put together to create what we hear this morning, which is a celebration of independence. We thank also Alan Labrie for his ongoing gift of his compositions, which we use at the beginning and the end and during the services. And we thank also today uh, Jeanette Heidman and Lauren Weeder, who had prepared for us a flute duet, and we are going to share that again today as our centering music in a little bit. And quick reminder on upcoming events. We continue to have the racial justice conversations on Wednesday mornings and afternoons, and we heartily invite you to join us if you haven't already. You are more than welcome to jump in and kind of, you know, learn what there is to learn along with the rest of us. Our Young People's Choir continues on Mondays. Our adult choir is gonna take a two week break so that Billy can catch his breath um, from his long haul of learning how to do this with our choir and we'll let the choir catch their breath too and have a couple of lazier Sunday mornings, let us say, and then we'll resume towards the end of July. But they are already hard at work preparing both songs for the uh, late summer and then a winter concert for us. They are imagining far into the future what the gifts of song that they are giving us. Additionally, um, next week is a special treat. Maeve Weeder, the daughter of Tish Hanlon and Steve Weeder, who is a recent graduate of Kennett High School, is going to be our guest speaker. We're gonna do an interview format next week and she's gonna just share her reflections on what it has been like to finish a milestone in the middle of pandemic, what kept her strong, just whatever her thoughts may be to share with us about what it's like to be a graduating senior in this time and then try to have dreams and goals when everything is so uncertain. Uh, we appreciate her willingness to be a new voice for us to listen to within our community. So that's a highlight for next week. So do, do tune in for that. And I believe that's what I've got. There's cocktails and conversations again next Friday, as always, five o'clock. Watch for the um, update. 
So I invite us to prepare to center ourselves with the music prepared by Jeanette and Lauren on the flute. <laughs> yourselves it's worth it she should hear appreciation for that gift that was beautiful yeah thank you <laughs> ah, all right you can stay in muted um as long as we don't get a background echo otherwise i'll mute you again but we're going to do prayers of the people so you'll have to unmute yourselves as you want to jump in here but first we'll do a um we're gonna sing happy birthday to my mom and anybody else who has a July birthday. So if you have a July birthday, raise your hand. Oh, my Sandy mom has a <laughs> July birthday. Ray, Ray has a birthday. Um, there's also some anniversaries. Uh, who else is waving? Who else is waving? Did I miss anybody here? Sandy. My mom's birthday was in July. All right, All right. there you go. Yeah. Um, and Sandy, Sandy, yes, I saw Sandy. Uh, and also, if you have an anniversary in July, you are supposed to confess today. So go ahead and raise your hand. Come on, come on. We and Meg, Sue. Yours is today, right? Yes, mine's today. I'll get to that. <laughs> but for now, let's uh, let's sing happy birthday to our birthday people. Um, I guess we're going to do this kind of live and crazy. So feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to share your voice. Please don't make me be the only singer. Um, it's audible. So Bob, I know you're going to add your voice so I can hear my voice. So Bob's leaving us in happy birthday. 
He's been nominated. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy you. Happy birthday to 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 um, and I do have a couple of prayer requests that I want to put out there early on. One is that, um, as you know, we always raise up people that are living with cancer diagnoses. And we do have a member of one of our families who has received a new diagnosis and is just going for consults with the oncologist now. So it's too new to share a lot more than that. But just to say that please hold up those that are living with cancer, whether they have been on this journey for a while, whether they have shared their news with us or continue to wish for privacy. There are so many people touched by this illness and they're in so many different steps of this journey that we ask that holy and healing love will be with each of our beloved community members, right where each of us may be and in the forms that love needs to seek us out. Um, additionally, uh, Richard A. Um, did experience a second stroke and is headed for rehab again. He, um, he's a member of our community. And so prayers for him in his recovery. This was not as catastrophic as the first, but everyone is a setback or a challenge. And so we ask for prayers for him and for his family as they move through this, and for others that are living with the um, aftermath of, of strokes and such challenges. These are the immediate, um, and I guess two more. Michael, Lori's brother-in-law, is looking at a potential stem cell transplant, and we pray that he'll stay stable enough to be able to go forward with this, so prayers for him in his journey. And for Maureen, sister of Tish, who is receiving good news in her, in her ongoing health challenges. So gratitude for some good news and prayers for the health of those that have already been raised up. And at this point, if you wish to unmute yourselves and you have any prayers of concern that you want to raise up, well, then we'll follow that with prayers of celebration. But does anybody have a prayer that they particularly want to add? You'll have to unmute yourself if you want to, because I don't have the power to unmute you. I'm going to say, then I'm going to lift up prayers for those who are oh. about to undergo or are recovering from surgery and recent procedures. Um, we named some of them last week, but Wendy, Sue, Sandy, Kevin, <laughs> Cheryl, Judy, Deanna and others. Um, Sasha, I think we need to add in there as well. I, and I know, I, so Lee and Kate are recovering. I know there's more people that are recovering from something that's going on in their lives than I have fully named, but, uh, and Jeanette and her eye. <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff happening to our bodies here. So prayers wherever you may be on your healing journey. Kevin, I know you would like to share a prayer concern, so go ahead. How, how do you know, Gail? You unmuted yourself. Anyways, um, go ahead. Pray, <laughs> prayer for, um, for Sue for back surgery and for her daughter that she'll have good health and for Gail and Chris's daughter that she'll have good health and for Gail's parents that they'll have good health. And also prayer for all the gays and lesbians and all of them that have suffered, that they may have peace. And all the Afri African Americans that have suffered, that they may have peace. And all the police and military who put their heart and soul into their job 
may they know that they're protected by St. Michael as they serve. Wow, Kevin lays it on the line for us, doesn't he? <laughs> Whether or not, you, yes, God bless um, language and inclusion and um, hear that you have been included, brothers and sisters, in God's prayer. However you might identify, know that this prayer is lifted up for you or those you love. And one last opportunity, if you have a prayer of concern that you want to celebrate or to, to raise up, then I ask for prayers of celebration. Uh, does anybody have a happy news besides birthdays, lots of happy birthdays um, to celebrate? Any other good news that people wish to raise up here? Somebody better give you me You know, I'll go there. Yeah, I know you'll go, Kevin. You're like a one-man band here, man. <laughs> All right, All right I'll, say, I'll try and say it quick. Um, my mother's birthday is coming up on July 7th, so I'm happy mm -hmm. about that. But also, I met a nice family at the campground. They're a beautiful family, and they have a beautiful dog named Frojo, which I love. And on the way home, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, I saw a deer, and it's baby deer crossing the road. And the baby deer looked just like Bambi. I was grateful for that. And also, I got to feed the goat at the campground yesterday. It came running to me, a black and white goat. I was so happy. That's it. Kevin's giving us wildlife sightings and not wildlife sightings. Um, to make us smile and give us a little bit of happiness. Jeanette, go for it. I want to celebrate New Hampshire. When I look at the COVID map every week, New Hampshire right now is the only state that's going down. And it's, it's like, okay, all of our wonderful visitors who are clogging our highways, but you know, enjoying the outdoors that we get to enjoy all the time. I hope you're being safe and careful and um, that we can keep in this downward trajectory. So yay us. <laughs> Nicely said. Both welcome and, and a request for ongoing safety from us and our guests as well. Hmm. Uh, yeah, go for it, Billy. Um, so I would like to offer a prayer of thanks and celebration to, in general, the church and the music ensembles that we have at the church. Um, so for some of you who know, I just uh, restarted one of my um, summer jobs in a restaurant in the Valley. Um, and just adjusting to the whole thing just was, you know, it was tough for me. Um, and I'm just, you know, super thankful to have a group of people who are excited, willing, and just overall enjoying putting in work to making great music together and having a community that supports it. For me as a musician, especially going from teaching band, eh, now just teaching chorus, which was my passion and stuff, I'm super thankful for the opportunity and I just wanna thank everyone involved. And so a prayer of thanks and celebration for everyone for that. Thank you, Billy. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. All right, I don't, have I missed anybody? I think not. All right, a couple more prayers. Um, we always pray for our sister community, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in Zimbabwe. And we pray also for Honduras. These are communities with whom we have very tight and ongoing connections, and we raise them up in prayer. And they really symbolize for us many countless communities with whom we share a faith, um, a hope for holiness and peace and justice in this world and healing in this world. We pray for people that are living in isolation. We pray for people who are living in communal settings, which can be safe places, but can also be risky places. We pray for people that have taken new vows together. Again, we'll talk more about that this week or later. Um, our young graduates who are trying to make sense of the world in a time when it's hard to make plans and they are still having the courage to make changes in vocation, um, relocate, and dream. So for 
all of us to have the courage to dream and make change if we're called to it, even in these times of uncertainty, but also that we will um, hold those in prayer who are required or dare to make these changes. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God, today we celebrate the freedom to worship, the freedom to speak out, the freedom to gather in creative ways, the freedom to dream of living into our ideals as they were expressed by our forefathers and our foremothers, both our spiritual ancestors and those that helped to found this nation. We ask that you will call us to be our better selves, our best selves as individuals, as a community and as a nation and globally, and that you will remind us how we may best do this. We ask to receive the blessings of this morning's worship, the song, the scripture, the texts uh, that reflect on what it means to have these freedoms and the privilege and the responsibility that comes with them. We ask that you will uphold those that we have named in prayer and those that we quietly pray for without saying out loud their names. We ask that you will be with those who are indeed called to service that is challenging our officers, our firefighters, our EMTs, our military, and those who have chosen to take on the yoke of leading this nation, leading our states, leading our local communities. In all those levels, we ask for wisdom, listening, a heart that is open to all the people that are cared for within each of these realms of governance. We offer you now our words together as we say the Lord's Prayer as it was first taught to us. Our Father, Um, and Billy, would you care to introduce the song that we're about to oh hear? Um, because we're going to move into the um, the special music that your choir has prepared. Of course. Um, so today's um, this month's song that we'll be doing is a song called "America: The New Colossus." Um, originally, this is um, based off of "America: The Beautiful," and also features of "Give Me" features the song "Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor." Um, so originally the music is by Samuel A. Ward. Um, we have some new music in this song who's by Tom Fett and it's also arranged by Tom Fett and Thomas Grassi. Um, so this is actually a really big piece um, for the chorus uh, because it's rather a long piece that has a lot of different moving parts at some points. Um, it's, you know, it develops a lot. And overall, I think this is a really good challenge for the choir, and I think that this um, came out very well. I'm actually, I'm, well, I'm happy with all the choirs we make. But this one I'm especially proud of because of all the work that we have put into this. Um, and I think this is actually a really great piece to symbolize um, celebrating independence, celebrating the, um, the birth of our country, and just overall celebrating, you know, America. So I think that... This will be a great song. Yeah, enjoy this, everyone. This is a really good, good song for us. Thank you, Billy. Um, I'm just going to add that uh, the images that you see come from the photography that Chris has offered to us. In the, and so the images that go with the voices are also coming from our own community. And so gratitude for all those who contributed to this. And let us now enjoy this reflection on liberty.
So feel free to unmute yourselves again and offer a round of gratitude and that was well, well done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sounded wonderful. Oh my goodness, all these wonderful. You were blessed to have such music. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. All right, so I'm going to mute us, and today um, I'm going to ask that you will pray with me first, and my um, message today involves the scripture, but it's woven into the, to the reflection, so please pray with me. Oh, holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to start by saying that as people have mentioned, Chris and I are celebrating our 35th wedding anniversary today. And also, as I sort of mentioned <laughs> last Sunday, uh, Sarah and Niru went before um, an administrative person in the city of New York on Wednesday and began the process of becoming married. Now they have posted that they are married, so I believe they consider July 1st to be their wedding day, 
although I think there's some more steps to complete the whole process because they're going to have a minister do a ceremony with them and then they'll send that back to the city. However, congratulations to them as well and to our other children who have the courage to, you know, make promises to each other and dream and move forward with the anticipation for what comes next in their lives despite the uncertainty of these times. We need the hope of these promises and these covenants. And today is, is the day after we celebrate the great covenant that this nation made together to become a nation, to believe in the ideals of freedom, not for some people, but for all people, and to work towards that. And at the same time, we know perfectly well that even when those words were penned, um, the eloquence of Thomas Jefferson, that um, not all people were equally given the same privileges in our society even then. And so today, the reflection that we have between scripture and text is a reflection on the milestones, some of the milestones that we have achieved as a nation to understand what liberty means and how we continue to break open this opportunity for all people, knowing full well that it is an ongoing work, that freedom didn't just come to us on that day in July of 1776 and it was all done we know that even then right that there was a war going on and that it the words and the ideas had to be framed and ratified to become our constitution ultimately and that we continue to have the mechanisms and the processes in place to create freedoms here in this country that allow our voices to be raised, that allow us to have the freedom to believe differently and together and to have vote and education and so many other rights. And that it has taken time for these to become more sustainable for different people. Um, and one of the ways that we can think about that is the vow that Sarah and Niru took this week to each other because the very first time almost that I got to officiate at a wedding was at the wedding of my friend's daughter and her wife. And even for those two women to be able to declare their love publicly to each other, but not just to declare it as an, a ceremony that had no teeth, but to declare it in such a way that they had the same access to legal rights and privileges and protections as other people who cho choose to make a commitment is a threshold moment in our nation. And all along the way, I think we can often narrate how we measure freedom by our freedom to choose who we love. There have been times in our history when people of different races could not legally marry. Even in the last century, this was a problem. And there have been times in our lives when our soldiers went abroad and they met people from other nations and married and they couldn't bring back those spouses as legal citizens of our country but had to abandon partners and children, sometimes for a generation. We know that there have been times when age um, or choice has not been everyone's to make in the saying yes and consenting to such covenants or people have been forced into a non-covenantal relationship by other means. The choice to love, the choice to reach out to someone else and desire to make a promise and to have it recognized and upheld by our society, our culture, and to be able to dream the dream that Sarah and Miru have today of building a life together, having children together, creating a future, celebrating with their families, and believing that the next generation that they bring into this world will have those same rights or even more rights is one that we continue to cherish and it is the one that we have struggled since those first days from the days of our earliest founding to make available to all people and we know that it isn't always in all ways available to all people 
but when we measure our, our progress by love and our capacity to have love and share love and express love with each other in a legal way, we have made tremendous strides and we do have these ideals and we believe in them and we are making them more and more possible every year, every decade, for every generation. I offer you now a meditation that includes both scripture that talks about freedom and the, the holy texts of our land, the great words of our land and some of its critics who wanted those same freedoms for their people and had to ask for it and call upon it before it was finally made legal and delivered. Please listen to the words of the scripture and the words of our spiritual ancestors and our peers talking about what it means to be free. Psalm 119 verse 45. I will walk about in freedom for I have sought out your precepts. Declaration of Independence We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. Isaiah 61 verse 1 The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Bill of Rights Religion The free exercise, freedom of speech or of the press, people peaceably to assemble, well-regulated militia, people to be secure in their persons, due process of law, nor cruel and unusual punishments. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Jeremiah 34 verse 15 Recently you repented and did what is right in my sight. Each of you proclaimed freedom to your own people. July 5th Address by Frederick Douglass Fellow citizens, the signers of the Declaration of Independence were brave men, great enough to give frame to a great age. They were statesmen, patriots and heroes, and for the good they did and the principles they contended for, I will unite with you to honor their memory. Fellow citizens, pardon me. What have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice extended to us? Galatians 5 verse 1 It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. July 5th Address by Frederick Douglass The blessings in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice. I must mourn. Luke 4, verses 17 through 21. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, Jesus of Nazareth. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendants as they sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 21 through 22. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you, although if you can gain your freedom, do so. For the one who was a slave when called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. Emancipation Proclamation by Abraham Lincoln All persons held as slaves shall be forever free. 
13th Amendment of the Constitution. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, shall exist within the United States. Galatians 5, verses 13 and 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. New Colossus, an excerpt by Emma Lazarus. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these the homeless and tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Ephesians 3 verse 12. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. July 4th address by Susan B. Anthony. Our faith is firm and unwavering in the broad principles of human rights proclaimed in 1776, not only as abstract truths, but as the cornerstones of a republic. Yet even in this glad hour, while all men have been invested with the full rights of citizenship, women suffer disenfranchisement. 19th Amendment of the Constitution. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged on account of sex. James 2 verse 12. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. American Dream by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. An excerpt. This will be the day when all the chosen black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Civil Rights Act. To vote, full and equal enjoyment of any place of public accommodation, without discrimination or segregation on the grounds of race, color, religion, or national origin, equal protection under the law, equal educational opportunities. Romans 8 verses 20 through 22. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be liberated from its bondage and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Supreme Court ruling on Obergefell et al. versus Hodges. The generations that wrote and ratified the Bill of Rights in the 14th Amendment did not presume to know the extent of freedom in all of its dimensions, and so they entrusted to future generations a charter protecting the right of all persons to enjoy liberty as we learn its meaning. When new insight reveals discord, a claim to liberty must be addressed. John 8, verse 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. July 5th Address by Frederick Douglass I therefore leave off where I began with hope. While drawing encouragement from the Declaration of Independence, the great principles it contains, and the genius of American institutions, my spirit is also cheered by the obvious tendencies of the age. July 5th Address by Frederick Douglass are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? Quotation from Toni Morrison, the function of freedom is to free someone else. Galatians 3 verses 26 through 29. So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham and Sarah's seed, and heirs according to the promise.
I hope this reminds you of some of the powerful words, both of people that were critics of our society because they needed freedom for their people and lobbied for it and spoke for it and struggled towards it. I hope this reminds you of the milestones that we have gained and the work we yet have to do to become all that we might be as a free nation, but even the privilege to struggle together towards the aspirations of our forefathers and our foremothers and to reach for the dreams that our children have claimed for themselves as they make these vows together. This too is a privilege and a responsibility and it is ours. And as we celebrate Independence Day, let us know that we continue to work towards independence and that if we want to be that shining beacon of all that is possible, let us hold up that light together. Let us see it in each other's faces and lives and make space that all may partake of holding up that light and believing it is their beacon too. We give thanks for the ways that we can love each other and love this nation and this world and work together towards freedom. Thanks be to God. And so I move us from one promise to another. I ask that you will remember the promise that you have made to this faith community and that you will continue to sustain us with your giving as well as the many other ways that you offer your gifts and your time to this church and to this community and to this valley and this world. As always, if you wish to make donations to this church, to help us continue to be the vibrant place that we are, you can do so by going to jxncc.org or by making your regular contributions through check and mailing them in or dropping them off. We simply ask that you will continue to remember us and make us part of your regular habit of promise and commitment. And now I would like to close us out by singing, having us sing together um, a patriotic anthem, My Country Tis of Thee. The words will now appear on the screen and you can uh, enjoy singing together and then we'll go to our benediction. One patriotic hymn. Um, please join us in the benediction, and then if you want to hang out to say hello to each other afterwards, you are more than welcome to do so. <laughs> <laughs>